Good day, denizens of the interwebs. My name is Unsilent, and we're back with more flat out. So, when we last left, we were going to pick up with a race at, um, it was Brad something or other, wasn't it? Brad Super Dust Up. That's what we were going to pick up with a race at. We won our last race at the, um, Woodland Havoc. You can see little one in the bottom right there. So we're going to try and match that with our trip to Brad's Super Dust Up. So let's give that a try and see how that turns out. Probably badly if you remember any of the races last time. And hoping... No, we're not going to get a little bump from the guy starting behind us. We are going to get a bump from the guy starting be beside us and take out the scaffolding. Flat out demolition derby and destruction service. Oh goodness. Ooh. Oh, that was that was unfortunate. We are human centipeding through that left hander. Oh. Little howdy do up the inside, and we've got P4. I do like though that. Some of the tracks we saw earlier have those sort of obstructions in the way to as chicanes. This is the one has an actual chicane in the way, so it's, you know, hmm. We can just knock the barrels out of the way, or we can run into the digger. Oh, I've been punted. I got a little help spinning back around. Oh, and I'm, I'm over. We still have three and a half flaps left to recover. Lots of time. I was planning to use him as a break. Somewhat. Oh, I got a little boost. I was going to use him as a break, a la Michael Schumacher, where he totally didn't use Jacques Villeneuve as a break. And actually, he didn't use Jacques Villeneuve as a break in '97. He accused Jacques of using him as a break in '97, even though he turned right down in on him. The uh, Schumacher incident number two. Hereth 97, not to be confused with Schumacher Incident Number 1, in which case a wounded Benetton of Michael Schumacher just happened to uh, collide with Damon Hill, conveniently taking them both out of the race and securing Michael as first Formula 1 championship. You know, that's the thing about Schumacher and Benetton of 94 was Williams won the Constructors title that year because... I'm not entirely certain that was a really good car that Schumacher had. Because his teammates, and he went through a few. Wasn't JJ Leto one of them? And, um. Uh, who else? Didn't Jan Magnussen run for Benetton that season as well? Oh, I've got to really shave up. Oh, we're going to almost survive that well. But yeah, reading Steve Matchett's book on the 94 season, I think that was Life in the Fast Lane? He has three books, Life in, a Life in the Fast Lane, A Mechanic's Tale, and The Chariot Makers. Now if you want to learn a bit more about the technical side of Formula One, Chariot Makers is for you. Um, I want to say Life in the Fast Lane was the one about the 94 season and Mechanic's Tale was the one where Steve recapped his Formula One career. And uh, the one about the 94 season, just a fascinating read about... Oh, we're gonna need to boost, hold on a second. And we finish, finish with a flourish. I think Life in the Fast Lane was the one about the 94 season, and they talk about you know, he talks about all the troubles they had with the curse of... He was one of the mechanics on the second car they had. And uh, not Schumacher's car, his teammate's car. And he talks about all the issues they had with the car and how they ended up... How many times they ended up running the spare car instead of the... Instead of the second car during races. How they ended up having to keep going back to that same old beat-up T... Uh, yeah, T car. That's the right term for the backup car or backup chassis, but it's so interesting reading about the 94 season, especially Adelaide 94, that final race, the Schumacher incident one, between 
uh, from Matchet's perspective as a mechanic, and it's just like it's so it's written without the hindsight of '97, but it's very much a you know it's a shame the championship had to end that way, and we didn't get the constructors' title as a result. But hey, we won a world title, and we're happy for our other team that won that uh, world uh, world drivers championship. Benetton would go on to repeat that with uh, Schumacher winning the World Drivers' Championship, and then they won the World Constructors' Championship in 95, and Schumacher wouldn't win uh, another World Drivers' Championship until uh, 2000 with Ferrari, and then won the next four after that, so from 2000 through 2004. He was a good hand. Yeah, he had good equipment in that late run with Ferrari. He had the exemplary equipment in that late run with Ferrari, but that... 94 season with that absolutely terrible Benetton. Do you want me to say that Schumacher didn't have some talent behind the wheel? I just looked, what did his teammates do in the same equipment, right? And that's what it generally comes down to is, okay, you did this with this car, but what did the other guy do? Oh, wheel spin. Oh, after our success at the last Brad's thing, we're doing this, the Brad Pit Bowl, or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, we're gonna hit the digger. I've been run over, I've been run over repeatedly. Now, I talk about the current goings on of Formula One, but I kind of get the distinct feeling I'm not going to be releasing this current with Formula One, so it's just a, I think, weekend after Silverstone that I'm recording this. I'm new to this Let's Play thing. Let me have a little time to do some editing. That was the, uh... Oh, my... I think we saw... It, um, Austria. Basically the end of Nico Rosberg's championship chase. He is... Uh, Lewis is so far into Nico's head that, like, I don't think... Nico stood much of a chance if he didn't hold on to... Come on, get back around. I'm just spinning in circles. This track is not very good for us. Now, don't get me wrong. Nico's come a long way from... 2014, where he was... And even 2015, where I don't think anybody expected... him to provide a really significant challenge to Lewis. Austria was the first time that we really saw something out of Nico that said, I'm not going to let Lewis push me around, that I'm going to do pushing back. It, you know, backfired completely. But hey, at least he had some fight in him. Speaking of some fight, we have a little fight left in us still. We are going to exhaust all of our boost down this straight. Don't get punted, don't get punted, all right. Now we're gonna hang it around the outside. Oh, are we gonna try and cut back in? Now, this is the trick. I've got no boost, and I've got to make a move in this last corner. And we're going to pick the wrong line and end up losing two spots. I think this track has it out for me. Alright, we had good luck on the other one of the, um, forest ones. Let's try this forest one and see how we do. It said I had a best result of eight. Did I actually do this one already and I've already forgotten? Oh my goodness, get out of the way! Now I see this, this is vaguely familiar. Is this from the last video then? Oh my goodness, we need to... Ah, just punt me. There we go. Well, we have slightly dented that other car. Oh, he's throwing the block! Yeah, 
If anyone never says they come out of a race of plateau to unscathed, they are lying. Before they finished stone dead last and avoided contact from everyone. Oh, and here's the podium all right in front of us here. Let's try not to... So the top six you can throw a blanket over. Let's try and get by them there. They're good, good, good. We're in P2. And P1 is right within spitting distance right there. Oh, that went poorly. That went very poorly. Hey, it's still better than the uh, European... Oh, we've hit him. I was going to say, it's still better than the European Grand Prix at Azerbaijan. At a certain point, Formula One will figure out that money and spectacle isn't going to retain people in good racing will. But then again, I say that as an IndyCar fan who saw the series have spectacular racing and not really showed... Well, they showed some growth. The general growth of NBC Sports Network doesn't hurt. I just wished IndyCar would go back to the old Dallara original body kits because those were racy as all get out. Less downforce, put a emphasis on on uh, underbody downforce created through uh, ground effects. Something that I hope that the 2017 Formula One cars. Yeah, they have the bigger diffuser, but they didn't really do much to limit downforce in the top side of the cars, and that's where you get your dirty air from. Ah, oh, come on. Isn't this what I did the last time, too? Now that, I, now that I'm here and doing this again, I realize I've just made the same mistake at the same corner, at the same track twice. And I might be able to get fourth, but that's... You need a podium to move on, so... Yes, I know, I need to qualify for next race by a podium. Alright, we've got some dollars. Let's think about some tuning here. Let's spring for some suspension. The body kit. And we'll get some exhaust, too. That's one too far. Let's try. We haven't done Fairgrass Run, so let's do this one. Let's give this one a try. It's such an odd-shaped track, although it reminds me a little bit, a little bit of Road America. Oh, what the hell are driving me off into Narnia? That's a nice turn, actually. I really like Whoa, that turn. Nobody's going to take the uh, slightly dirty line there. Oh boy, everybody is trying to go for the same piece of real estate. I think that exhaust upgrade was a good idea because this is a very fast and whoa he's binned it. So have we. Oh very much. Well Okay, let's carry on and pretend that never happened. I really do like this circuit though. This is a nice one, just from that those that first lap there. It's fast, it's flowy, this is a great... Everybody lights up their brakes into this one, it gets punted. Well, thanks. Now I'm in... Now I'm in last because you are a knob end. Good, you deserve that one. Well, that was a mistake. J-turn and we're away. 
Things they don't teach you in driving school. Oops. I slightly hit the transport. See, traction out of the slow corners looks like... Oops, I've hit the signs. Traction out of the slow corners feels like it's so, so important. I think my car has a little bit of a list to the right. I think I banged up something on here rather badly. Oh, well, I hit him and I got my comeuppance. So yeah, apparently that money I spent on the new suspension is not worth it, seeing as it's already wrecked. This is third place right here. Oh! Everyone's just gonna pile into the same bit of real estate and wreck each other. Yeah, I'm not turning right. I'm just... I'm not even holding the stick and it's just listing to the right. So either there's a calibration issue, which I'm sure I would have noticed on one of my other games, or I have a small problem with the car. Actually, no, I don't want to be in front into this turn. But I do want to be in front coming out of this turn. Oh, I do not want to go down there. We already tried that once and it went poorly. Oh, we're in P2. I thought we were in P3, but okay, we've got the leader right in front of us. Can we pick up the win? Oh, he's just within reach. Oh, we might be able to get him on the run out. Dump all the nitro and we are going to pass it for the win! Within sight of the checkered flag. Just under four tenths of a second. Sorry, we passed her for the win. We passed Sue O'Neill. For the win, what a pass. Let's look for that in the action replay. So here we go, I think this is the last straight here. Into the final turn. Dumps the nitro, and we're not going to get a very good angle of how, we, how close we were coming across the line. Well, that's disappointing, all that weight going through the action replay. And that's what we get. But we won $1,500. Do we have access to the final race? No, I think we have to fill in all the other squares as well. Of which there are five more to do. Oh dear. We're going to get it next time. Next time we are passing all these races. I don't care how long that takes. So, the next episode will be four hours long. But until then... I'm unsilent. This has been some terrible racing. Flat out's a fantastic game. Even if it's got a few problems with the driver. We'll see you next time. Uh -oh.